Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea for our uh, Wednesday Hump Day uh, update on metals and uh, other things that we always seem to talk about. Uh, I got the live coral cam up here. Man, you missed it. Uh, I, I almost missed it, but a big ass shark just kind of swam right through the screen here. Don't see that very often. I believe it was a nurse shark. Uh, but pretty cool stuff. Uh, this is a live Miami coral cam for my local peeps down here in South Florida if you've never seen it. Really cool, almost like a giant fish tank. I suspect that shark is still sitting around there. You see how quiet it is? Um, usually when the fish are kind of tucked away, it means that a predator is sitting around. Well, let's take a look at uh, what we got going on today. And uh, what is this right over here? Oh, I don't know what that is, but let's move here. I've got a brand new computer here, brand new uh, uh, Apple uh, laptop that I got specifically just to do these shows. And uh, forgive me if the uh, volume's a little weird or the picture's a little weird. I'll get it adjusted eventually. But it seems pretty cool so far. I like it. It's pretty fast. And uh, memory's not getting eaten up on, uh, on some of the uh, uh, pages out there. That's, uh, man, very uh, memory intensive. Well, I'm going to do a quick, uh, let me do an update here real quick and see what uh, we're looking at. This is a static page, so it doesn't move. Uh, um, second to second and uh, this is uh, courtesy of CCE they've been around forever this company's been around since the 70s in one form or another uh, they use a teletype system when I first saw it it's a coin dealer and a precious metal dealer uh, uh, system that's uh, monthly monthly subscription cost and they also run spots out here I like the static spots um, that way I can talk about it it's not flashing before our eyes before we get to something else. Let's take a look at gold here, 1767.62, the low overnight uh, since uh, the close of New York yesterday in 1788.89 and being the high. Uh, we're currently sitting at 1785. We're like right near the high. Uh, look at silver, man. Silver's doing uh, quite well. 2360 is the low. I think the day before was around 2322. We can take a look at the uh, Kitco 24-hour chart here in a second. I'll pull that up. Uh, and a high... <clears throat> A high of 24.27, so we're basically right there. Uh, and platinum, uh, which has been my tell for a little while with gold and silver. Usually gold leads the way and silver and platinum follows. Oddly enough, for the last three weeks, month, I don't even know, I do this every day. <laughs> I, I lose track of time, but uh, the uh, platinum seems to have been leading the way with gold and silver. It just seems that way. Maybe it's coincidence. Uh, maybe it's uh, something, uh, you know, platinum's a tell right now. It's tough to say. Uh, but that's the way it's been happening here. So platinum's been up. Uh, it looks like gold and silver up as well. Uh, palladium, I don't know. I don't understand that market. And it's uh, probably an uh, industrial market entirely, uh, but no less. Uh, let's move back to the markets that we mess around with the most, which is the gold, silver, and to some extent the platinum markets. Uh, yesterday I used the term explosive upside with silver. So, and if you notice the other day, day before, I used a, uh, a King Kong and a Godzilla fight for uh, Ted Butler and uh, Andrew McGuire. Uh, you know, and the reason I've done this is I've, I've talked about it a couple times here on these videos is uh, to get people to click. It's interesting. I have these. Uh, 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 shows that I do that I think have some wonderful content. Some of my, I, I think my best content has been on the videos with the lowest view count. That's because my, my thumbnails that I use are, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess I'm not being creative enough with my thumbnails. So we're kind of just playing around with the thumbnails there, folks. Um, and Seward did, did have kind of an explosive upside. I mean, it was an 80 cent, almost a dollar move yesterday, which was, you know, in such a short period of time, I'd call that explosive to some degree. I don't think, you know, although uh, it was pointed out, and it is true that uh, uh, explosive in silver is not the same as explosive in some markets that people like to uh, point out, like crypto. Uh, uh, the crypto is not explosive. That's just crazy volatile. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, no less, uh, uh, it was a great move. It was a big move up, upside. And I think you could uh, legitimately say it was an explosive move. It was real quick. That would be explosive, right? Super quick, really large. Didn't hang on too long yesterday. Uh, however, it seems to be back up to where it was yesterday. And again, uh, I think this is a good sign for precious metals. I think the bottom is in. I said that a while back ago. I know there are people hoping for a sub $20 silver so they could stack up some more. But, you know, I just didn't see it happening. The only time I see a sub $20 silver happening anytime soon is if we, uh, you know, we get into that 2008 crisis-like event. And uh, will it look the same as 2008? I don't know. Are we in it now? I don't know. So 
you know, I, you, you would think that uh, bankers and governments learn their lesson not about uh, fiat currency and uh, an ever-expanding credit bubble, the greatest bubble of all time, uh, but uh, you think they learned their lesson how to unwind these markets maybe a little bit better, and maybe they have. I don't know. Maybe we've already seen the, the down in, and we're going to see a uh, manufactured down instead of just a giant crash, but I find that hard to believe. When things go, they go, man. When the shit hits the fan, it hits the fan. So, uh, so we did have an explosive up yesterday. I'm going to call these little short, fast movements, especially what we saw in New York yesterday as an up day. Uh, let me find a graph here real quick too, and let's take a look here at the 24-hour chart and 24-hour uh, uh, gold chart, and well, let's do silver chart because that's what I said yesterday. Silver chart and price of silver 24-ounce Kitco. Let's kind of see. Yeah, I would have called yesterday. Uh, let me move that up a little bit, make that a little bit easier for everyone to see, including myself. Uh, yesterday's move. Take a look at that from yesterday. I mean. You got uh, October 18th, which would have been, uh, today's Wednesday would have been Monday. There's Monday. Uh, you got your down there. Look at that, $23, almost to that high $22 mark there uh, uh, for a bit. And all of a sudden here, take a look at this, 23 24 So I would say that was a pretty explosive, especially uh, when New York opened. Look at that, boom. Uh, what do you call a boom? That's explosive. <laughs> so explosive on the upside. Um, but not explosive like, you know, a uh, 45 degree angle straight up. That's just, you know, you don't see that in precious metals markets very, very often. Even in silver, most you see in silver moves usually is a, a dollar moves are pretty erratic, you know, and not uncommon for silver either. Uh, so take a look at this. You've got your uh, uh, up here. Wow. Wow. And look where we are right now. Uh, today, October 20th, the last 24 hours. So it, again, what I have noticed, take a look at when these peaks happen. Peak, peak, uh, and a peak, <laughs> not a peak, a valley. There's a little valley. Uh, explosive downside movement there. Is that okay if I say explosive downside? So, uh, and there we've got the upside. Oddly enough, all in New York, all happening in the New York markets, right in that little time frame uh, between the New York market open of uh, 8.20 and uh, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And I forget what time it closes at one or something like that. So uh, there you go. There's your explosive upside movements right there, even today, even today. Uh, but uh, the funny thing too, oh, here, get rid of some of those click up ads. Maybe I could kill that on the new computer here. Get rid of those clicks or those pop-ups. Um, so let's just do a quick refresh here in silver and gold and precious metals. And where are we? 17, it's still about the same, 24. So it's 50 cent move up, 60 cent move up again today. I think we're gonna hang on to this $24 mark here. Um, it looks like we're looking for a climb up again, um, and as uh, Ted Butler would talk about, it seems that the, uh, the uh, short positions are not in control right now, and uh, they're probably losing even more money as we speak. Last time, uh, Ted says there's four to eight, um, what is it, uh, 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 bankers out there, commercial banks that uh, control these short positions in silver. And uh, then you've got your professional managed money as well. He thinks there's a short position in that. Uh, so they're, those guys right now are probably in the losses of, I think last I heard, he said about $9 billion or something like that. Just some incredible large amount of money that these, uh, uh, these people have lost on their short positions. And it looks like they may not get it back. You know, and unless we saw a sub $20 silver, those losses are going to be pretty high. Uh, I'll, I'll know more when I read Ted's uh, newest report coming up this weekend. And uh, speaking of Ted, he did a uh, report for Silver Seeker. We're going to read that in a moment. You guys can read that for free. It's not part of his uh, subscription service. Uh, let's move over here to, uh, uh, where are we moving over here? I thought this was interesting. Why not just issue certificates for defunct hard drives? Well, uh, that's a joke about uh, uh, more... I'm going to talk about what the article is really talking about. The British Royal Mint on Wednesday, let me blow that up a little bit, uh, said it planned not to build a plant in Wales that could reclaim hundreds of kilograms of gold and other precious metals from electronic waste as mobile phones and laptops. Well, I think that's a pretty cool idea myself. Hmm. The logistics behind it is getting people to turn in their phone rather than throwing them in the garbage can is going to be the hard part, or getting the uh, uh, people that sort the garbage to give you that stuff is going to be the hard part. The logistics, but I love the idea. Uh, there's, boy, if they started going after land, uh, landfills and getting all the electronic stuff and all the silver we've thrown out for decades, uh, that would be a lot of silver. Uh, so it was kind of interesting to read that the, uh, uh, let's read the rest of this. Gold and silver are highly conductive. 
and all right let me just click on it it's really a short read okay uh, let me just start again. British Royal Mint said on Wednesday it planned to build a plant in Wales that could reclaim hundreds of kilograms of uh, uh, gold and other precious metals from electronic waste such as mobile phones and laptops. Gold and silver are highly conductive and small quantities are embedded in circuit boards and other hardware along with precious metals. Uh, most of this material is never fully recovered with discarded electronics often dumped in landfills or incinerated, particularly silver. Uh, my understanding is that uh, more silver has been uh, uh, thrown in landfills uh, than exist above ground today. Uh, and that's an interesting statistic. I think the uh, Silver Institute said that. Uh, the more than 1100 year old Mint said it had partnered with a Canadian startup called Exir that had developed chemical solutions to extract the metals from circuit boards. Um, and I thought that was very interesting, so I went and take a look at this company right here, and there they are, Exir, sustainably, sustainably sourced, ethically refined. Um, what a cool business model. Again, uh, I, I'd almost invest in a company like this if I thought, because some, think about this, they're really kind of doing mining. So mining of landfills, mining of people's garbage. I mean, that's mining, really, if you think about it. If you're pulling gold and silver and metals and stuff out of garbage, um, you know, that's mining <laughs> in, in a weird sense. And if they can keep the cost, really the whole key to it is the logistics behind it and the cost behind it. But I, I love this idea of being able to re recycle not just precious metals. We should be recycling everything. Landfills should be a thing of the past, in my opinion, at some point. Uh, everything we do from uh, um, uh, the garbage can to the bathroom <laughs> should be used in some form or way where we're not throwing it back into the environment and not using it somehow. Um, that's my opinion. Let's kind of move along. Let's see what else is in GATA.org here. I didn't really get a chance to, to look too much. I've been playing with this new machine here and <laughs> trying to figure out how to uh, get it to work. Again, I hope the uh, sound in the uh, picture is not too bad, folks. I'll get it wired in here eventually. Uh, Bill Murphy at New, that New Orleans conference is interesting. If you live in the New Orleans area, I suggest you go to GATA.org and go go watch this or go. It's a show kind of, but uh, uh, you'll get to meet a lot of people that uh, smartest people in the gold and silver industry, actually, in my opinion. And Sprott Hathwagen details why gold should be going up, but why it hasn't been. Uh, that's new. I didn't see that. We'd have to read that tomorrow, maybe, if it's still up on uh, uh, GATA.org. And, of course, most of you will beat me to it. So, And I'm glad I can point this stuff out to you. It looks like a, article, a good article to read. Let me know in comments if you read it before tomorrow's show. Um, I like this idea again. Let's move along to Ted Butler's. Oh, there goes the phone. The phone's been pretty busy this morning. Uh, Ted Butler. Uh, silvery eruption. Ted Butler, as you know, I've been uh, gushing over him for the last week since I got this uh, uh, newsletter here that I've been reading. And uh, it's a su subscription only newsletter, so I can't really quote from it. I wouldn't either, even if I could. Uh, you know, I wouldn't show you because, again, that's, he derives his living from doing these newsletters, as do a lot of guys. Uh, but he, I did find this free article that you can read here on uh, silverseek.com. Uh, it's called Silver Eruption. Looks like it's just written uh, recently, October 18th, which would be two days ago, 2021. And I did not find this on a subscription site, so I guess Ted writes for outside sources like Silver Sea. And let's do a quick read on this one because uh, I like what T Ted has to say, all right? Silvery eruption. Oh, he used the word eruption. Maybe that's what I should have used yesterday. Silver eruption. I like that better, too. Maybe better clickbait. <laughs> Uh, God, I'm telling you folks, it's a fine line between throwing clickbait out there, which I see a lot of high volume uh, YouTubers do, and uh, trying to make that uh, uh, title, that thumbnail, uh, 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 relative to what you were actually talking about. So uh, I think I would agree with silver eruption. Maybe that sounds better than like, silver explodes. <laughs> uh, silver purchased in retail forms tends to be held for long periods of times. Uh, he's right about that. Often, often, sometimes over a lifetime, it passed on to heirs. To some extent, that's because of rather few opportunities silver investors have had to cash in at high enough prices. Uh, while silver has yet to visit price levels where most investors consider selling it, the day is surely coming, and I believe that most silver investors agree. This is the one reason why silver investors have been remarkably tenacious in holding on to silver. 100% true. Uh, uh, as a frontline uh, uh, soldier in the retail and wholesale 
uh, sales of physical precious metals. I can tell you, I have seen uh, very, and I, I'm in South Florida, so this is a, you know, this is a wealthy area down here. There's a lot of money out here. I've sold a lot of, you know, I've sold a lot of gold and silver uh, to some very wealthy big people, even though I seem to be a small store. I've done some big deals here. There's, I, and, and since I've been here since 1995 in this location, uh, I have uh, sold a shit ton of metals out there, okay, and some to just some individuals. I have seen no capitulation by these individuals, and I'm sure they would all come back to me or at least call me, considering they purchased it from me. Uh, and I also kind of keep tabs on what my competition is doing. You know the old saying, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. <laughs> and it actually, I don't consider them enemies. I, I'm very good friends with most of my competitors. Uh, but uh, no less, uh, uh, they're quiet too, man. They're quiet out there as well. So, uh, 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 I mean, it's quiet as far as they've not seen capitulation of retail silver buyers, okay? Uh, basically none. You see a little bit here and there. Uh, and let me move along here and read the rest of... Uh, uh, what Ted says and exactly kind of I will concur 100% with him being in the industry that he's right about that and uh, What's it say right here? He says uh, it's not just silver in retail form that is so tightly held 80% of the world's total silver bullion inventory of 2 billion ounces is tied up in the world's silver ETFs or in the COMEX warehouses That's 1.6 billion ounces of all the thousand ounce bars in existence in the face of a much steeper price decline than occurred in gold, the reduction in the holding in the world's silver ETFs has been non-existent. While gold ETFs holdings are the same level they have been for years, silver ETF holdings are 500 million ounces more than they were at the start of 2020. Okay, so uh, Ted is a, uh, uh, Ted, I don't think Ted is a physical trader. Most of his trades are done, you know, he, he's a technical trader. He does uh, uh, futures and he's very familiar with all that stuff. Uh, paper trading in the silver markets, um, and um, I think he feels that uh, ETFs play a really important uh, role. And I talked about that in a show a couple days ago uh, with my Godzilla and King Kong <laughs> thumbnail, and uh, that was the whole point of this. Is uh, or or what I was talking about was uh, uh, Ted. Ted fully believes that it's been a really good thing, and I'm I have mixed feelings on this that, that the ETFs have been a good thing for uh, uh, the silver market. Um, uh, because they've uh, created a different way for a lot of people to buy silver, or more people to buy silver, especially in larger quantities uh, for richer people that can't physically hold on to it. Uh, however, there are a lot of downsides to uh, ETFs, in my opinion. But those downsides apply to a lot of other uh, uh, paper and online markets that Ted is familiar with, and that's his end of the market. Uh, so, uh, which, which is third-party risk. I mean, I always believe that there's third-party risk with this stuff. But let's move along from here because uh, I have a tendency to digress on my own little topics. And let's finish off with uh, Ted Butler's talking about. And he says, I'm leaving out the frequently recurring phenomenon in silver whereby large investors have converted several hundred millions of shares in, of SLV into non-disclosed physical silver ounces to avoid reporting requirements. The net effect of these conversions is to try to understate how closely held is the world's two billion ounce inventory of silver bullion. In dollar terms, that's less than a minuscule $50 billion, or about $7 for each of the world's citizens, or about a third of an ounce on per capita basis. Silver prices have fallen more than gold prices, yet silver is much more tightly held than gold. I'm very bullish on the prospects for much higher gold prices based upon the COMEX market structure, including uncovering the presence of new gold, whale, and a COMEX futures. Uh, and uh, uh, he mentions that this, uh, I think it's John Paulson. Uh, is that John Paulson? My memory is a little weak sometimes, uh, with names especially. Uh, is that new big whale that uh, bought into gold when it had dipped down into the low 1700s last month or so ago? Uh, so, and I believe Ted Butler's probably correct on that. That is the gold whale. Uh, so he says here, but it is downright shocking how much stronger are the investors holding silver. Silver bullion is the tightest and strongest held of all commodities and investment assets. But that's just for openers. It gets a lot better for those expecting sharply higher silver prices. That silver is so tightly held is bullish enough, but now comes a really bullish part. Ooh, gosh, I was getting excited about that, Ted. Now, <laughs> now you're going to get me going on something else. Beautiful. All right. All we need is a minor price gain to $30 or less to get silver going on an inevitable journey to the heavens. In fact, the basic story of the decades-old comics, price manipulation, uh, let me add, which Ted is an expert in this. This is one of the reasons 
I like to read his, uh, uh, or I subscribe to his service, his uh, newsletter. Uh, and Ted Butler was one of the first people I ever read that pointed this out, that, and it made sense. He, he's absolutely correct about comics price manipulation. Uh, so uh, let me finish this. In fact, the basic story of the decades-old comics price manipulation is simply to prevent the slightly higher prices that would set off the stampede and the silver. But that manipulation is now older than the hills, and the big commercial crooks, commercial banks, uh, have positioned themselves to withstand the full fury of the coming silver price. The biggest silver crook of all, J.P. Morgan, and its friends and family, with many hundreds of millions of silver ounces, are set to make the most when the silver price goes boom. So, uh, and this is something we've talked about many times, is that uh, J.P. used to be the great short commercial crook in the COMEX market that would short silver, but they managed to, uh, with those short positions, turn it into a long physical position that they don't even have to report. Uh, Ted Butler is one of the gentlemen that has pointed this out, and this is why I like him. He knows his shit. Um, and let's keep moving along here. Uh, higher prices uh, beget still higher prices. Try coming up with an alternative explanation to the world's upward trajectory and everything around us. I mean everything. Stocks, bonds, commodities, real estate, cryptos, and then try to explain silver sitting out this boom. And folks, you know that as well as I have. You see it in the comments. You see the snarky comments by some people. Ah, silver's not done anything. However, if you know how the game is rigged, you know how the game is played, you don't worry about it. This is what I've been telling you for over a year now. Relax, don't worry about it. And most of you that actually listen to me, don't worry about it. You just see this as opportunities to buy the dips for what is an inev inevitably going to be a mega bull market in silver. Uh, when our time comes, oh my gosh, it's gonna be crazy. Um, and let's see what Ted, finish off what Ted says here. Those currently holding silver make up such a tiny percentage of the investment world. And this is true. Way, way less than a fraction of 1% of the total world's financial assets. Uh, that, when the silver bull really gets rolling, there will be 10 times as many more new investors looking to buy than old investors looking to sell. So all that's missing for the silver price juggernaut to get rolling is some smaller price pop to get the train in motion. And I think we're starting to see that, that price pop now, folks. We'll see. We'll see. Never underestimate uh, uh, bankers, though, so, and uh, their, their access to money. But with these losses right now, these short positions probably should cut out at some point or just uh, uh, fill in. Uh, however, again, you could still see these price silver get monkey hammered down. I don't know if it's over yet, the monkey hammering. Uh, Comex does nothing about it. Uh, but the end game is near. The end game is definitely near. Uh, good article here, too. I'm not going to read this to you. Uh, if you like Ted Butler's article that I kind of just read to you, it wasn't too long on silver eruption, which is free. You can read it on read it yourself at silverseek.com. It's called Silver Eruption by Ted Butler. Brand new article as well. Um, you can... Ted Butler also on his site, and I'm going to go, um, I pay for this service, but uh, Butler Research, let me just hit that. You can go to Butler Research, and here it is, uh, and he's got a free archive on here. And there's some really good stuff down here, and I think uh, one of them I was looking at is uh, uh, feedback from subscribers. Uh, where was that? I did an interview. Uh, give me one second here. I just kind of popped out of that. Uh, December 28th, uh, 2016, uh, this is a good, it's old though. And remember, this is prior to the 2020 uh, price explosion on uh, gold and silver um, when it was in the sub-20s here. Uh, so Ted pretty much nailed this right. I think this was the beginning of what I call the current bull market that we're in, even though it's not, people picture a bull market as like a straight line upwards. That's not what gold and silver bull markets typically look like if you look at the graphs. Uh, good article here by, you can read this for free on Ted's uh, Ted Butler Research page. Uh, one of his free uh, uh, articles, The Mechanics of Price Explosion. In fact, if you just type that in, The Mechanics of Price Explosion, in your uh, uh, Google search engine, I am sure that uh, that'll pop up top with Ted Butler. Good read. Uh, and if you have the money and you, and you want to learn more about silver and uh, you want to learn more about how the game is manipulated and who the players are, Butler is the man in the silver market. You need to read him. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what the uh, mainstream narrative out here is. Um, the single viewpoint mainstream narrative. <laughs> Nothing good. Uh, same old SOS, same old SOS here, same old SOS here. What are markets doing? Blah, blah, blah. Kind of sideways right now. I uh, don't see that hemorrhaging in the stock market at all. In fact, that just blows me away. What, what is causing that market? You know, well, we know what's causing it up. Endless money endless money. Can you imagine even if another 1% or 2% of 
of uh, investment money, as Ted points out. So the silver market w makes up maybe 1% of 1%, I'm guessing, but maybe 1% of 1% <laughs> of the uh, uh, total equities market out there. Even a tiny, significant, a tiny insignificant amount of money uh, out of Wall Street, out of mainstream, uh, goes into silver, man. Silver's just gonna pop right through the roof. And again, being one of the most underpriced commodities out there, silver, used in almost every electronic device. I mean, they use it in printed circuit boards. Uh, where was I just reading that uh, uh, silver is used in, uh, I didn't even know, they make silver paint. That's how they make some circuit boards now. They take silver and they paint it on something. It only has to be a few microns. Silver is such a great, uh, uh, so great at conducting electricity uh, that uh, uh, they can paint it on something and it's, uh, make it into a circuit board. So. Silver's uses are just phenomenal, unlike uh, other precious metals. Gold, not to the same degree, but uh, silver's an industrial metal as well. I can actually see them making a, uh, can you imagine if they outlaw silver one day? <laughs> uh, if the price of silver just went, just think about if all, all of a sudden everybody started buying uh, uh, silver. You know, all of a sudden 2% or 3% of that Wall Street money went into silver and silver goes to like $1,000 an ounce. Now I'm going a little bit crazy here, but it's not impossible, okay? What, all of a sudden, you think they have issues with shortages with chips, or, or the chips are getting more expensive because of uh, uh, they're not being able to make as many. Can you imagine what would happen if the price of silver went up tenfold or a hundredfold? Um, they would probably make silver illegal to own, or they would stop trading prices and, and call it a strategic metal. The states would. Uh, probably all over the world, too. I don't think uh, the United States would be the only one. Uh, China would do it first. They would say, okay, it's illegal to trade in silver now. <laughs> Uh, again, you remember, I, I, don't, I think people forget how important silver is in everyday products of the modern world. I mean, it is, it's, it's extensively used uh, and also thrown away, as we pointed out earlier. Um, let's move along to uh, ZH and take a look. Not too much in precious metal news. I've kind of uh, missed a couple things. A base case for silver, sprout money is always writing some good stuff about precious metals. Um, and politically, I'm not going to make too many comments here because I'm going to probably start my own political show as well at some point, but not now. Uh, absolutely true, uh, no doubt about that. Uh, this is kind of interesting, this article about aspirin, but uh, let's move here to uh, Bitcoin rallies to all-time records over 66K as ETF options uh, uh, begin trading. Well, <sighs> got to love it. You know, I look at Bitcoin like as a casino type deal, you know, uh, uh, you know, if anybody knew what Bitcoin was going to do, they'd already be multi-billionaires. You know, that market's just going to get pushed around, manipulated by the big now, the big whales are already. Look, there's ETFs for it now. And any of you that don't think that the big whales are already fully in this market, if you think that the silver market is manipulated and, and you, you, you are afraid to trade in silver, uh, but meanwhile you're trading in cryptos, then you are deluded because that Bitcoin market is as uh, manipulated as any now. You've got the big mega whales out there. There's not been a huge amount of regulation in the United States, but there will be. There will be. They're coming up with it. So uh, uh, while you, you, you have a fairly unregulated, look at, look at silver, r highly regulated market, uh, but comics, the, 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 they do nothing with those big short positions. And now you've got Bitcoin, which has not even as much regulation as the, uh, uh, the silver market does. And you've got just as many whales in it, uh, probably if not more, uh, that are going to move those markets around. And what did whales do? Whales are, uh, they, they eat, well, I don't know if whales eat fish, but whales are big predators and they, they eat the little fish. And all of us are really little fish out there, including ourselves in the silver markets. Look what JPM did all those years. JPM moved the silver market down. They finally got caught for it. They paid a billion dollars in fines for manipulating and spoofing gold and silver markets. Now they're in the long position to make a, a bigger fortune, which makes it harder to complain for us. <laughs> so, you know, before for silver investors, JPM Morgan was on the opposite side of where we wanted to be. Now they're on our side, so how do you feel about that? I mean, they're, they're ready to manipulate it upward. So we're complaining about the manipulation downward. Uh, are we gonna complain when they manipulate it upward? I don't think so. And uh, you know, I don't think there's, I don't think JPM could make enough. If JPM could cause the price of silver to go to a thousand bucks an ounce with what they own, if they physically own that, it's hard to tell because uh, they don't have to report it. But uh, uh, if they own all that silver, uh, God, you, 
they'd make silver a thousand bucks an ounce if, if they could. They, they would, they would, uh, until the government stepped in and uh, uh, made it illegal to trade in silver. So, <laughs> again, don't, you know, I'm laughing, but it's, it's possible, anything's possible, especially in something, you know, again, if, if you were gonna put any other metal out there on the strategic list of strategic metals, I think silver really deserves to be there as a strategic metal as well. Uh, but you don't see it listed as a strategic metal. It is though, for sure in today's time and age. Uh, White House, oh gosh, all right, that's, oh, Jesus, why don't they just go away? And uh, let me see, what else do we got going on here? The debt ceiling is really a debt floor. Uh, Peter Schiff, say as you wish about him, whether, uh, you know, whatever you say about Peter Schiff as far as his belief in the uh, allocated or unallocated uh, uh, gold accounts and the Perth Mint that he deals with or uh, whatever you say about him, he does know his stuff when it comes to the Fed. He speaks the truth about debt ceilings. He speaks the truth about the catastrophes we're going to face. The only problem Peter Schiff ever got into is uh, when he puts a time frame on something. I think, uh, you know, he, he pretty much timed that 2008 collapse pretty much dead on with other people. I think Ron Paul did at the time, another, you know, Ron Paul politician. Um, uh, they, you know, a lot of guys were, you know, not, not a lot, but a handful of people were predicting the 2008 crash. Peter got it right, exactly right. Uh, but I think the problem was, as Peter went on CNBC or something, and, uh, and uh, shortly after that, 2010, 12, or 11, whatever it is, and started saying, okay, yeah, uh, stock market's going to crash, and this is going to happen. It's going to happen, absolutely, but he, he made the mistake of putting a time frame on it. And ever since then, uh, uh, those corporate single media narrative people have uh, uh, reminded Peter that, oh, you said it was going to collapse in 2016. So never underestimate and in, in this i'm sure peter schiff knows this n never underestimate the power of central bankers and government uh, especially central bankers they're actually the real people behind the curtain running everything well wall street uh, not much again talk about on uh, uh, precious metals here and uh, i'm getting used to this machine so i'll spend more time looking for some articles as well and let's take a look at the uh, Wall Street Silver. If you uh, watch my videos and you're not a member of Reddit Wall Street Silver, it's a pretty, really, not pretty, but really neat community out there. And uh, I'm gonna just scroll down here and kind of see, the memes are always wonderful. Uh, waiting for $17 silver that never came. <laughs> um, you know, uh, yeah, that's, again, I said that in my videos for uh, many times. I, I thought the, the days of sub $20 silver were over, just like when we were in the, you know, remember we were in that $15 silver range, 12, 15, you know, 17 range, and it would pop in there for a couple years. Uh, we were in that uh, uh, sub $17 range. We weren't gonna see $10 silver again, we never did. I think we're in that or close to that same level. Uh, and again, that's my opinion, you never know. Again, never underestimate these short, big short commercial positions in silver, but uh, I think it's possible that uh, we, we're not gonna see sub $20 silver again. Uh, highly probable, we won't until we see a fin financial collapse like we saw in 2008, uh, which will take everything down with it, uh, including uh, uh, gold and silver. But like then, you won't be able to buy real physical bars or uh, uh, coins at the uh, price that you'll see during that type of crash. Uh, we weren't able to do it in 2008. And if you remember back then in 2008, uh, gold and silver got knocked really bad, 20%, 30%, or I forget what it was. Uh, however, you couldn't buy gold or silver bars. You had, you know, you were going to wait uh, uh, months to get your silver, and the premiums were even crazier um, at that point than they got last year. Uh, let's kind of move along here to uh, mm, copper market. Uh, yeah, that's a strange thing going on with the copper market, but I think copper market's a uh, uh, under valued commodity as well. So I uh, wish I knew more about it. I actually was just looking to say, should I get into the copper market? No, I, what I got to do is stick with what I'm doing right here. So the world needs honest money backed by gold and silver. My mom works hard, very hard for just a dollar a day. And now you're telling me that rich people simply print dollars. Uh, they got some great memes out here. I just kind of see if uh, uh, the big whales which enter the so future silver market had brought all the what bullion banks have sold at 22, 23, and 24. So the selling of the cartel and paper market has now become ineffective. Um, okay, there's some uh, interesting discussion going on here. Uh, silver back through $24, gold is pushing 1800 This could be a game changer. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think it could be a game changer. Wait and see, though. Never underestimate these uh, four to eight big uh, commercial positions, uh, uh, short positions in uh, silver, as Ted Butler says. And never underestimate governments and central banks either. 
uh, central bank digital currency total enslavement can't couldn't agree with you more uh, if you get a chance take a look at the uh, uh, Wall Street silver site pretty cool and uh, you know I'd suggest you get involved with it a lot of good discussion out there let's say there's my there's my uh, silver explodes to the upside <laughs> uh, I think what did Ted Butler call on and say well, maybe what, what, what should I have said ah I should have said silver erupts to the upside that would have probably been a better clickbait title for sure and true let's take let's go back to where we were here and take a look at the uh, um, uh, I forgot what I even talked about in that video yesterday but I'd like to thank everybody here that's watching uh, and that's subscribed to my videos Joey um, let's move down here and see if there's any questions too I'm gonna see if I can answer a few questions here uh, sorry I don't want to make you too dizzy uh, thanks for watching G and Beto I appreciate it uh, what should I get a coiner bar um, whatever's cheaper Beto I, I suggest you whether it's coin or bar just go with the cheapest premium for a recognizable product recognizable by the industry of course uh, crypto is gambling with your cash buying fake coins that will never be yours uh, I'd rather buy metals it's yeah some of us are tangible people some of us are not I just you know I'm not one day I may play around in that crypto market but I'm under no illusion what it is you know which really what is it <laughs> it's a string of numbers that you technically own that really are backed by someone's use of electricity I don't know <laughs> you know when, when you try to say well what's tangible about it and what's it backed by people make a big deal well electricity man it took a, I, I view that as a negative it took electricity to make something fake <laughs> um, again you know I know I'm calling it fake uh, uh, but I'm not a crypto hater don't get me wrong I don't hate cryptos I just don't respect them you know I think uh, uh, as I think that the technology is there for something uh, contracts or whatever it may be I heard about smart contracts all these things but as far as a uh, uh, anything competing with precious metals and even the dollar it's really just a digitized limited edition uh, US uh, fiat currency dollar and it, it's based on the dollar too well, so is gold and silver but uh, I like the track record of gold and silver way better uh, it's been around a long time the volatility is not insane like with the uh, uh, in fact what do you call that that volatility is just like a casino it's like uh, <laughs> it's like going to a casino and throwing all your money okay here it's gonna go up to but anyways let's move along to uh, the other comments here Michael Bronner yeah I'd like to get some five ounces I don't think anyone's making those uh, Mike so um, I haven't seen them produce in a while I think a lot of the uh, companies or uh, Silvertown these companies uh, Hamilton Mint uh, these private producers are really cranked up just trying to get as many 10 ounces and one ounce as they can out there I uh, really don't think they're cranked up for fives but I'm not sure I just haven't seen them on the market um, GHST says make up the mind either silver gold or on roller coaster ride of the moon or people will never go back to the premiums that they pay while holding for long term can't have it both ways um, oh I actually replied to this I forget that's I had a glass of wine or two when I did some replies last night <laughs> and do 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 well Make up your mind either gold or silver, roller coaster ride to the moon, or people will never get back the premiums that they pay. Uh, well, I think you're. I was a little confused on what that comment meant, but uh, if you're paying a high premium, you don't need to. I mean, people that are paying seven, eight dollar premiums, uh, really, it's it's shame on them. You know what I'm saying? That you know, I, I've, if you've listened to my videos, especially, and you're still buying high premium stuff, you know, it's you could have bought more silver with it than paying premium. Uh, than higher premium and chances are you're never going to get that premium back I've always said that but what does that have to do with the roller coaster to the mean to the moon uh, the fact is that's exactly what gold and silver is it's a roller coaster to the moon it's a up and down roller coaster that is in a trajectory upward in the in the long term uh, and it doesn't you know if you're in the downturn uh, turn if you're in the the dip in the roller coaster of course it doesn't seem like it's going to go back up but if you understand that this market is uh, the ultimate destination is the moon so to speak uh, you don't worry about it you don't worry about it uh, unless you've got only six months to live then it might be an issue hey thanks for watching GHST appreciate that uh, okay I know I'm a dummy when it comes to internet terms IRL means in real life <laughs> I, thought meant, I thought you misspelled the word Earl oh gosh well I did show you the uh, I did show you an Earl with a bunch of monkey hammers <laughs> so, uh, I learned something new IRL means in real life I won't forget that you learn something new every day Alex thanks uh, Lee Ving says I know you're a precious metal guy I understand you're not anti crypto but you're completely clueless when it comes to crypto it's not based on nothing just Google blockchain technology blockchain is a transparent ledger it's about the way future like it or not 
Uh, love your show, but please educate you. Um, I don't know. There's still confusing. Again, I'm not a hater of the technology, but blockchain is a transparent public ledger. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Google blockchain technology. Okay, all right. Well, nothing to disagree with you. I don't disagree with that. But really, what is it? What is it? What do you actually physically own there? What's the tangible? There's nothing tangible about uh, cryptos. In fact, it really, in my opinion, and again, I'm cool with it. If you're making money, Lee, and the other folks, if you're if you're going to, if you're making money in precious metals markets, as I've always said, of course the game is rigged. But you know, if you know how the you know if you know how it's rigged, you can win. All right. Same thing with, uh, uh, I'd say the exact same thing with crypto. The exact same thing with can be said about, uh, uh, cas you know, going to the casino, you know, playing blackjack. The better your knowledge of the game, the better your knowledge of the, the uh, dealer, you know, what their edge is and the, you know, the players around you, the better chance you have of making money. With gold and silver and precious metals, you don't have to really know the game as well. You don't have to know all the technicalities of it. You don't have to know, you know... All you really have to know is that in the medium to long term, it has a historic record of going up and up and up and up. And as I said, the roller coaster of the moon type analogy is what I'd like to use. Uh, blockchain technology and, and uh, cryptos just don't have that yet. They don't have the history behind them. Uh, they're still evolving. Uh, at one time, it was the wild, wild west. It's still kind of an unregulated market. Uh, however, now you got the big whales in it. You know, And this is probably why you see these big ten thousand dollar removes you know a lot of people like to point out that it's up to 60 again but it was 60 once already and who who jumped in on that 30 to 60 30 that ride from 30 to 60 or who who jumped in at the higher levels before it went down to 30 um, it was probably the fish the people that don't understand that market a vast majority of people now if they had owned uh, silver or gold um, you know uh, you, you, they could look at a, a, a track record and say well for a comfort level, you could look back and say, well, gold and silver has been around for 5,000 years. So I can be comfort comfortable knowing that it's not going to go bankrupt. The technology is not going to get changed or, or any more regulated than it already is or not regulated. Uh, it's not going to evaporate. Uh, I don't require electricity or internet to, to own my gold and silver. Uh, so there's a lot of differences here. Uh, I don't see... Uh, cryptos as any type of competition against gold or silver. Uh, I, th I think that people that do uh, have a very, I'm going to say it, foolish viewpoint. Uh, gold and silver are completely different things. Now, with that said, if you can, again, if you can play that market, the same if you can play the options market and, and, and equities and stocks and other things, if you can play these markets and win, uh, I'm, a, I'm a free market capitalist. I'm all for it. So I'm not anti anything on this stuff. I just I'm just calling things out for what they are, and, and really, what is cryptos? It's a string of, of, uh, uh, of uh, encrypted numbers and letters or whatever uh, that I don't know what you own. What do you own? Again, just my opinion. Thanks for watching, Lee. I really appreciate it. Uh, Tariq says, Bitcoin explodes 30%, silver explodes 3%. Uh, well, Bitcoin didn't go 30% overnight, and if it did, that'd be pretty scary. Uh, and as I said, Tariq, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, you know, what, what, I, what I've been talking about for the last, uh, how long? Oh my gosh, 40 minutes <laughs> uh, is absolutely true. Is uh, you, you, you got to understand the differences between Bitcoin, gold, and silver, uh, equities, and all these other things. Uh, Cowboy, there you go. Thanks for watching, Jake. I appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Offsey says mostly only in says 2.3% consider something explosive. Uh, don't get us wrong. We love silver. Silver is going to be a dynamic gain. I don't really hear this stuff. But when it, okay, uh, we'll find its way into silver. Yep, silver, as Ted Butler points out, there's less than one, there's probably 1% of 1% of the investment money in Wall Street is in silver. You get any type of real move into silver, it's just going to go stratos stratospheric. Uh, and uh, Dr. Offsey, in my opinion, as I said earlier, um, I did put the, uh, I should have used the word erupts, silver erupts rather than uh, silver explodes. But hey, listen, Explo it was explosive if you think about it. An 80 cent move, a dollar move in the course of an hour or two, that's pretty, that's like, you know, uh, think about, that's explosive, all right? So you could technically call that explosive. Is it the type of explosive that you see in uh, uh, other markets? Uh, yeah, yeah, really a 2 or 3% move in the, uh, the Dow or anything in a single day real quickly, they would call that an explosive move. So um, I'm justifying why I used it as a clickbait, sorry. <laughs>
Thanks for watching, Dr. Arsley. I appreciate it, and you have a great day. Keep stacking. Patrick says, my definition of explodes may differ somewhat. That's true, Patrick. It's kind of what I just said. It's an opinion of what uh, explodes, comparatively speaking, too. Comparative to what, you know? Uh, uh, an 80-cent move in a, uh, uh, a stock worth 20 bucks, a dollar move in a stock worth 20 bucks, uh, would be considered explosive by uh, any analyst out there. So it, I guess the word explosive could be opinionated. And uh, like I said, I wish if I was as smart as Ted Butler, I would have used the word erupts, silver erupts. I still would have got the clicks too. Damn it with erupts. I wish I was that smart. Thanks for watching, Patrick. Appreciate it. Uh, Santa, Santana Cinnamonarthus. Oh, wow. Cool name. Um, sorry if I uh, botched it. Can't go wrong with HL stock for silver miners and NFGs for gold miners. Eric's brought invested and been finding a lot of high grade gold, not financial advice. Uh, I don't know enough. You know, I, I like, I'd probably one day invest in gold miners or silver miners. And I got to tell you, I never really have. I'm, I'm fully kind of invested in my business uh, and precious metals and a few other areas. Uh, my friends and my family. <laughs> That's a good place to put your investment. And uh, uh, But, you know, mining, mining stocks, a lot of people, uh, and I'm sure you understand, uh, Santana, mining stocks are different than owning gold and silver. Some people think you're buying the mine. Really what you're buying is you're buying the you're buying the equipment, you're buying the expenses, you're buying the leases, you're buying the management of the company, the most important thing. If a mining company has good ground and they're managed well and they can keep their expenses down, uh, yeah, that's, but again, you're not necessarily buying the price of gold. However, I think when gold goes up, it does pull the price of miners up for a couple different reasons. I think some people mistakenly confuse they're buying the gold in the mine. Uh, some investors do. And then uh, for the other people, they understand that, uh, you know, if they have a good lease and the price of gold goes up, that's probably good unless they've pre-sold. And remember, a lot of mines did pre-sell their positions. That's why they hedged themselves. Uh, a lot of cool stuff there, Santana. I uh, wish I understood more about it. And thanks for watching. Uh, good to see you, Joey. Thank you. And I appreciate you sharing uh, Arcadia Economics. I've seen them before. Uh, thank you for sharing my uh, um, Earl. Appreciate that, Joey. And uh, Wall Street Silver is playing a raid on November 5th. Should you buy uh, uh, before or be faithful? Um, I think the Wall Street Silver uh, raid thing is pretty cool because it, it gets people in unified and it gets people thinking all the same thing. But I don't think there's enough power there to really make a significant difference in the uh, wholesale markets, really, uh, or in the thousand ounce bars. You know, I think in the retail markets, you get enough people buying one ounce, ten ounce bars in, in smaller increments. Yeah, it can put a hurting on the uh, on the supply there, but uh, the overall silver supply, you know, when you got JP sitting out there with almost a billion ounces in silver, probably, um, I don't know if that uh, uh, a bunch of people buying silver is going to create an immediate effect. But you know, this Wall Street Silver Group and uh, people stacking, and what we talked about earlier in this video, how people continually buy and you know buy gold and silver, um, uh, and having capitulated. Uh, are certainly going to have a big effect when this market really starts moving and physical becomes a lot harder to get. Uh, I'd say keep buying, that's my opinion. Uh, precious metals are looking on love to think we, uh, we're in, in for an upward reversal in the next few months. I think you're probably right, Gritty. It kind of just feels like it. Uh, and I believe that the uh, short position of silver has been pretty much uh, hammered down. They better take their licks and get out now while they can, that's my opinion. Uh, own nothing to be happy when the shizzy hits the fizzy manipulation is not shizzy hits the fizzy. I should start using those words. Uh, uh, God's money never fails. Well, hey, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate that. And I uh, hope this video was tolerable on the new computer. I'm going to have to take a look at myself and uh, see what the sound sounds like. But meanwhile, thanks for watching, folks. You all have a great day. Uh, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. I'm a local brick and mortar. I advertise to beat Atmex, SM and J, J, <laughs> SD and JM Bullion, uh, the big, on, big three online companies who I consider uh, reputable. Uh, but it's easy for me to beat them, and it should be easy for you to find a local coin store to beat them as well. Nothing wrong with those companies, but it's all about keeping that money local, folks. And sometimes I think you can always find a better deal locally. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and uh, talk to you soon. Bye now.